G'day. Today I'm going to tie um, an articulated squid pattern, um, very similar to Enrico Puglisi's squid. So this is um, just one that I've been using. Uh, quite quite a good fly. Looks awesome in the water. Um, yeah, it's on a 2.0 hook, articulated. Uh, let's quickly just run through the materials. Um, obviously given that it's a EP fly, that's um, EP fibre. Uh, in this case, it's one that I actually blend myself, so that's why it's um, it looks like that, because I've brushed other colours through it, and that the colours I've used for this particular one are white, tan, and cream. So if you want to do that, just take some of each colour and um, just get a, a dog brush and brush, brush it all together. Um, uh, we've got two lots of thread, so the, this one is gel spun uh, and this one's just 6010. The gel spun's used when you get to doing the shank. Uh, the shank I'm using is one of the Flyman Big Game shanks. This is the 80mm version. We've got silly legs in two colours. We've got the pink and the pearl, uh, fairly transparent. Um, obviously some 3D eyes, so in this case these are 10mm 3D eyes. We've got some feathers, and I put uh, one each side. So this is the um, Woolly Bugger Saddle Hackle from Hairline, which is really good because you've got some good colours, but it's also relatively thin, so it works out really well um, for, for the legs of the fly. Uh, we've got the Polar Flash here in pearl. Um, we just put a couple of strands of that. That's an option. Don't have to. Two Gamma Katsu SL12S. Um, the old Velcro on a paddle pop stick to help tease out the dubbing when we get to that stage. And this is the dubbing that I will be using. You can use this or if you prefer and you can get a hold of them, you can use a dubbing brush. Um, I am going to do the dubbing and put it on myself in this particular fly. I think that's all the materials. The only other thing I use is super glue as we go through this and some UV epoxy. Um, and to stick the eyes on, I use Tarzan's grip. Um, so I think that's all the materials. That said, let's get started. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is get some EP fiber and I'm just going to taperize the edges uh, and I'm going to tie this first piece in right at the bend of the hook, first bit facing down the hook a little bit like so, fold that bit over and bring it, the thread back over it. All right. The idea of that particular piece is really to help hold the legs up um, of the fly. Uh, so let's put the legs on. So the legs, as I said, I'm using pearl. I'm going to use two pearl. And then I tie those in, but I'm not going to tie them in so that all the tips are going to tie the one slightly longer than the other, just to give it a little bit of variation. As you can see there, some loose wraps over that. Alright, so that's those white ones. You can see they're slightly different lengths. And then I'm just going to use one pink. And this one I am going to make sure they meet up. And it's, yeah, as I said, it's just a variation. Um, so you've got some different length legs. Looks a little bit more natural. So that's the pink. Some loose wraps over there. Hold it all down. Uh, the next bit is optional, but I get two strands of the polar flash. Um, in this case, it's the pearl polar flash. Um, I just like the pearl better. It sort of goes a little bit translucent as well, which is kind of what you want. But whatever colour you're comfortable with, um, and whatever flash your colour flash you're comfortable with, go for it. And I'm just going to make those uneven as well. Bring that back under the thread over the top. Some 
thread over there. Okay, so that's the legs there done. And what I'm just going to do now is put a, just a little bit of seep glue over the that, and that'll hold that all in place, stop any threads coming undone, etc. Get the materials I've used out of the way. Now I'm onto the hackles. Um, and I didn't prepare any because I wanted to sort of show exactly what I'm doing and the ones I would select. Alright, so there's two that I've just pulled off. You can see they're you know nice and thin, um, got a nice sort of curve to them, um, and that's what I'm I'm after for this particular fly. So doesn't matter which way you tie them in, whether you tie them in um, curved in, curved out. Um, but the key is to try and just in front of, finish just in front of the um, of the silly legs. Now I don't strip anything off for, the, for these ones. I um, but what I do is I loose and then pull down, loose and then pull down, and then just do that until you're happy that you've locked it in relatively straight. So you see that hasn't bent as I've <coughs> tied it in, which is what happens a, a fair bit with some of these. So I am going to line up the next one, which is about there. And I turn the vise the other way this time. Come over the top, loose, pull down, loose, pull down until you're comfortable that you've got it where you want it and again you can see that hasn't twisted it's splayed out quite nicely which is what I want because that'll give you the the movement in the water um, so then just cut off that excess there hold that all in place and clean that up make sure those feathers don't pull out there we go that's good doesn't always work out that way but if you follow the the way I tied those in you usually get them fairly straight again I'm super gluing those on stop those coming out all right so what we want now again is some more of the EP fiber taperize it as you go saves a lot of time when you go having to come back and do the cutting and this is just going to basically go over the top of what we've just done. Bring that forward, tie it down, and that should tidy that up. Good -o. All right, so that's the front, front part done. Let me just move that across so you can see. So you can see you've got the legs, you've got the feathers coming out through the front, which are those longer legs that the squid have. Now the next bit um, is basically just EP fibre filling the rest of the hook and the way I do it is I take a piece of EP fibre, taperize it as I've done with all the others so you're not with a piece like that. But you can see it's a very thin piece, don't put too much on. And what we're basically going to do is stack it on top of the hook and, and another one on the bottom of the hook. All right. Do that, we get another piece, taperize that piece a little bit, turn the hook over, bring this up, pull the fibers down. You don't want to spin it because what you don't want is too much fiber on the sides because what you want is a thin profile. So if you look at that one here front on, it's very thin at the front, right? That's what we're trying to achieve. So we bring all that forward, bring our thread back up in front. Okay. You don't really want to tie it down, but you do want to stop it all coming forward as much as you can. And then we're just going to repeat that until we get to the end. Now, as we get closer to the end, I'm going to start using shorter pieces of EP fibre because um, no point having really long pieces because you're only going to trim them off so just um, bring the pieces down as you like and again if you don't want to do this bit where you're tying it in manually 
you can use a dubbing brush and the only reason I don't use a dubbing brush for this is because you don't want the you know you don't want it sticking out here wide at the side and with a dubbing brush you get that and you end up having to trim it all off anyway so you waste a lot of material um, whereas this way it's a little bit um, a little bit more under your control how it all sort of hangs together Bringing that forward, keep bringing that thread up. So hopefully you've got the gist of that. Um, so I'll just finish this bit off and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm at the end. Um, I'm just building up a little bit of a head of the thread there and just making sure that eye's clear because you've got to stick that get the um, shank through. Finish that. Cut the thread. And then I'm just going to put another dog of super glue on that. And that'll stop anything coming undone. Okay. That's it. So, a little trick that I know people that spin deer hair will know. Just flick the hook and you'll see the fibres start to stick up. Which is what we want. Because then we're going to trim it. <clears throat> so basically what I do is come in and trim fairly close to the hook. Try and get a nice curve. both sides so we're going to come around like so and come right around the front because you want that bit at the front to be fairly rough Get those edges so you don't have square edges I usually take it out of the vise to do this so it's a bit um, slower than I would normally do it just expose that hook a bit that and if you've got a pair of thinning scissors and if you don't know what that is that's these ones with the comb front see the comb there um, what I do is I run these along the front just to thin out the fibers now make sure you don't get anywhere near those legs and that'll give us a nice flat side and we do the same on this side just sort of comb through and it's just what this these thinning scissors do is just take a little bit of the fibre off at a time. You couldn't do this with a normal pair of scissors, or you'd end up with nothing left. So, so that's it. So you can see how flat that is. Just maybe need to take a touch more there. It's got it. So that's nice and flat. So that's the head, pretty much done. Obviously, we've got to stick an eye on there, but that's not a difficult thing to do. All right, so the next thing is the body. Um, and for that, we need the shank. So this, as I said, is a big game, 80 mil shank. Bring that in through the hook. All right, so the hook points here. I always put this bit facing down to the same as the hook. So once that's in, I did bend this a little bit, to be honest, to get it to go on fairly easily and quickly. Um, so you know you can do that if you need to otherwise they do get tricky to get on to the hook and this is where the gel spun comes in now so i've got that nicely in the vise um, gel spun thread and as i said gel spun is good because it is super strong and you can put a lot of tension on it because what i've got to do now is get that wire back up against the shank and hold it there like that 
most other threads would probably break flat wax is probably okay but I prefer the gel spun because obviously it gives you a whole lot of strength too I mean that shank's never going to come undone my my guess is that's probably somewhere around 180 pound stainless um, and then with the gel spun holding it all together it's um, it's not coming undone and then I also go up to the eye because this is where you're going to tie your line onto so come up the eye a bit it is pretty flexible um, obviously the stainless so that's why I'm holding it as I'm as I'm winding it and I want to get a decent a decent amount of thread on there to hold it all together Oh, that's just come out of the vise, but that's okay. I'll just hold it while I do this bit. When stuff like that happens, you just don't panic is the, the, the advice I give you. It's easy enough to put back in the vise. So if, even if your thread stat, snaps, you know, just don't panic. Start your thread again and move back to where you were. Put it in a bit further this time. Right, that's probably enough of the gel spun. Like I said, I like to get a a good amount on there. Hold it all together quite nicely. Whip finish here. This stuff's slippery, so do a lot of turns on the whip finish. And again. And before I cut the thread, you know what's happening. Super glue time. This brush on super glue is great for this sort of stuff. So that super glue is going to definitely stop that thread coming apart. Okay, fair bit of super glue, but you want this to hold together. And that's it for the gel spun, they don't need any more. So I'm just going to move this down a bit so we can see it. Okay, that's good. Alright, so now the, this is, oh, it's not tricky, it's just you need to think about how you do it. So this is where you would, if you were going to use a dubbing brush, you'd tie in the dubbing brush. Um, oh, as I said, I'm not going to use a dubbing brush, I'm actually going to dub it by hand. Um, I just find it, um, find it a bit easier. Now the dubbing I'm using is made from the EP fibre as well. So, you know, you get little bits that you cut off um, as you're going through. I keep all those and actually then blend them. Uh, actually in a coffee grinder um, and it comes up as a pretty neat dubbing um, which I just put into a bag like that and I've got it ready for situations like this so you can see that nice EP dub um, and I am just going to dub probably around about an inch up the, the shank to start off with Get down to here. You want it to be reasonably thick. What this is going to help do is help help support the fibres because we're going to tease it out. This is what gives it the um, the fly a bit of body. It's like the spine of the sh the um, squid. A little bit more there. This stuff dubs so nicely too. It's um, it's really good for this sort of stuff. So about there. Then I'm going to get some EP fiber, and again, don't overdo it need to use too much you want to be able to see through that I mean if I put my hand 
behind that you can see through it and that's what you want all right so this first piece I am going to tie in so it's just touching the uh, the head of the the fly um, cut that I'll just tidy up the other end a little bit so you don't want this bit tapered so much because you only end up cutting it anyway so so that's just going to go on the top of the hook about there. So we tie that down. And a couple of loose wraps. Let that loose sort of spin that fibre around the shank. Okay, like that. And then the same again. So we'll just measure that off there. Turn it upside down, drop that on there, tie that in, a couple of loose wraps, spin it so it's down, round the shank, tie that in, alright so that's the first bit, so that's going to help, you can see the shape that that's gone into like a bell shape, that's going to help support the main wing of the body when we tie that on okay so then we're going to dub up again to about a half an inch before the eye of the hook all right so we just do that it doesn't need to be perfect because what i'm going to do is tease this lot out because once i've teased it out it'll help push the fiber i tie in up here further out It's pretty quick to do it this way. Yeah, a dummy brush would be quicker probably, but like I said, you end up having to trim it all anyway, so. You can see that building up nicely. Going a little bit over an inch away. Alright, so about there. Get our little piece of Velcro and we're going to tease that out. So you can see that's teased out. Pull that forward. And then what I'm going to do is another couple of these shorter pieces about there. this time I'm going to tie them in from the side and that way I oh know I've got good coverage around the whole fly between the two that I've tied in that's one There's the bell shape again. And I'm going to do a little bit more dubbing before I put the final body wing in. And that'll hold all that stuff together too. You can super glue that thread down or head cement it. For each of those pieces which is what I would do if I was tying these for somebody but I'm trying to save a bit of time for the video so I'm just repeating that step again get that bell shape all right now we need some more Fiber. Once again, we don't want too much. Nice straight edge. So this is going to form the main part. So this comes back to again just where the head is. So it's about that length.
loose wraps, spread it around, tie it down. And you can see that starting to take shape. Same again. There is a bit of material involved in these, I'm not going to lie. But they just look so good in the water. Shall we match it up? Bring that around. A couple of loose wraps. I'm starting to lose my voice in case you hadn't noticed. Okay, so that's given us the body. Thread to tie it in. Get our friendly super glue here because we don't want that coming out, and that'll lock that thread in. That'll lock that material in. All right. Now to finish it off, what I do is I will dub it but dub it to a point so you'll see what I mean when I when I do this so. nice and thick there coming to a thinner piece at the end bring that through there so you see it's thin and then gets thicker as it comes up closer to the body and that's it, how we finish it off Super glue. And then again I'll epoxy that when I'm done. Alright, so the next thing that I'm going to do is just get a dubbing brush. I'm going to just brush this all forward. That'll help get any loose bits off, but also make sure that that body is right round so you can see that squid shape there. Let me just zoom back a little bit and get the whole fly in. So there you go, that's the squid. Right. So that is still really transparent down here. It'll go transparent when it's wet. So that's it. And then obviously just stick the eye on. Um, fairly close to the eye of the hook. And then colour it however you want to colour it. Just use a permanent marker. You can just put spots on. You can put stripes on. You know, whatever. Um, you know, whatever the squid that are in your area look like. Then, then go for that. Um, other popular colours. Orange. Um, EP fiber comes out in a rust color. That's another really good one. The, those um, those squid that sort of look a browny color. Um, I also like there's um, a color called calamari pink. That's another good one. Um, so any of those, just mix it up basically, um, and uh, see how you go. Enjoy that.